It's quiet. Too quiet. Want me to fart? No. Don't do that. Well, it'll take away the quietness. There'll be some sound. That's not a mouth sound that bothers me. <coughs> Unless if you had... How about this? <laughs> no. I like that sound. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to our stupid directions. Yeah, yeah, dumb core. <laughs> I'm Rick. Uh, today we got a video. Uh, thank goodness. Yeah, I was hoping so. Join us. Um, this is a video called "Who Are the Tamils?" Uh, it's a Who are the Tamils? Yeah, it's an educational video. Uh, it's basically the history of Tamil Great. and the Tamil Nadu people. Freaking awesome! It's twenty something minutes, so wow. strap in here. Strap in. But it's by the same channel um, that we've seen a lot of. Like, it does like the cartoons of the history. So it's. I remember the last one of those. Yeah. we loved. Yeah, yeah, and I think we've done like the India one, but this is specifically he awesome. Did a specific. Who are the Tamil people that I think came out in June of this year? Is Run Beer in it? Uh, I hope so, because that's all we that's care about. That's all that matters because of his connection to the to millions. Just kidding, guys. Just kidding. Come on. Come on. This video is sponsored by Curiosity Stream. Get access to Nebula, a video streaming service made by they your did not sponsor this video. creators. When you sign up for no. Curiosity Stream. Thanks a lot, Nebula, Nebula Stream. Yeah, really. This is South India, home to the biodiversity hotspots, the Western and Eastern Ghats, the Bengal Tiger, the Nil Guru Tar, the Indian Elephant, and whatever this creature is. <laughs> India is also the cradle of Tamil culture. Today, there are about 80 million Tamils in the world. That's more than there are French, Colombians, or Kenyans. <laughs> Most Tamils live in North and East Sri Lanka, or in the Southern Indian state of Tamil Nadu, literally Tamil country. Tamil Nadu is now a state in modern India, but for thousands of years, Tamil Nadu was much larger and ruled by independent. I love the Irish Indian. accent. As to survive in classical civilization, because they've managed to keep their beliefs, culture, and language intact for over two thousand years. Two thousand. But who are the Tamils? What is their story, and what does it have to do with seven hundred billion dollar gold and coconuts? Well, let's find out. I didn't know it had anything to do with seven <laughs> cup of golden coconuts. <laughs> didn't know there was such a thing as golden coconuts. No, my coconuts are golden. The Tamils, maybe more than any other people, are in love with their language. Tamil writing has so been dated like as far back as the 6th century BCE, yeah. from the archaeological site Kairavi in India, and from the 2nd century BCE at Punakari in Sri Lanka, making it one of the oldest datable languages still in use. Tamils often call their language Tamartai, which means the Tamil mother. Mm. It's more important to the Tamil identity than land, race, or religion. Mm. If you want to have the most intense conversation of your entire life, just go ask a Tamil person anything about the Tamil language. Tamils also take pride in the independent origin of their language. See, you can roughly divide India linguistically in half. North Indians generally speak languages descended from Sanskrit, an Indo-European language. This language family stretches from North India all the way over to Iceland. South Indian languages like Tamil belong to a completely unrelated language family called Dravidian. Unlike Sanskrit, which <coughs> is no longer spoken, modern Tamil survives as a living language for millions of speakers. Dravidians do not like it when Russia. North India tries to push its culture or language on the south. The earliest clear evidence of Tamil people are urn burials dating from around 1000 BCE at Adich Anador. Amazingly, they found evidence there of the worship of a god with a trident and a peacock, very like the Hindu Tamil's favorite god today, Murugan. But the Tamils really leap into world history when the Maurya Emperor Ashoka mentions the unconquerable southern Tamil kingdoms in his rock inscriptions made between 273 and 232 BCE. Which is impressive when you consider the fact that the Maurya Empire essentially conquered everything else. This is right around the beginning of a Tamil golden age known as the Sangam period, lasting from the 3rd century BCE to the 3rd century CE. Third. At this time, <laughs> Tamilicum was ruled by three Tamil dynasties, the Solas, the Seras and the Panjas. Unfortunately, there were no actual pandas in the Panja kingdom. I know, I know. 
The Tamil kings were immeasurably rich and used their wealth to sponsor century-long poetry slams called the Sangams at the Panja capital, the Nagar, concourse, Lear. where male and female poets would show off their works. These poets created thousands of poems, books, and epic stories called Sangam literature. Sangam literature is unique in how it doesn't seem to belong to any single class or religion. It was written by and concerns Hindus, Jains, men, women, farmers, kings, pandas, non-pandas, and everyone in between. One great Sangam poet, Poon Koon Krenar, emphasized the equality of all humans, saying, I am a citizen of the world, and everyone in the world is related to me. This was quoted by one of India's most beloved presidents, the Tamil Muslim aerospace scientist Abdul Kalam at the European Parliament in 2007. The Sangam literature tells us about a rich, cosmopolitan and multi-ethnic Tamil-speaking society 2,000 years ago, where Hinduism, Jainism and Buddhism all coexisted peacefully, where kings would even invite priests to public debates on their beliefs. Sangam poems describe Madurai as so rich that it had a moat with secret underground passages large enough for elephants. Wow. Greek mercenaries really? out of its gates, and the scent of perfume could be smelled miles away from the city. Where there were folks of every race buying and selling in the bazaars or singing to the music of wandering bands. So how were the Tamils so rich? <laughs> Coconuts! The ancient world Spices was like bland, doom. flavorless, unseasoned mess. It tasted a lot like English food. <laughs> the Tamils taught everyone the way of the spice. A first century CE Greek manual for sailors, the Periplus of the Eritrean Sea, says that the Tamils export pepper and other spices along with diamonds, woven textiles, pearls, ivory, malabatrum, and other luxury items. What's malabatrum? Who cares? It sounds luxurious though. Another major export was cotton and silk clothing woven by women. Indian women would dominate this global trade for the next 2,000 years. Tamils traded so much that Pliny the Elder said India takes 100 million sesterces from our empire per year at a conservative estimate. That's about 10 tons of gold. China had the Silk Road, the Tamils had the... Flavor Silk Highway? Road, no, the Spice Boulevard. Whatever. They made themselves the center of a global trade network that linked Europe, the Middle East, Africa, India, Southeast Asia, and China. And the British We've like, discovered we'll massive take all that. of yeah. Chinese, Iranian, and Roman coins along the ancient Tamil coast. Tamil inscriptions have been found as far apart as Egypt and Thailand. Oh, a statue cool. of the Hindu goddess Lakshmi got buried at Pompeii, and Tamil ambassadors met with Augustus Caesar in 20 CE. This trade meant That's Tamil cool. cooking the first international cuisine in the world. Huh. The word orange comes from the Tamil Nadan. Oh. Ginger comes from Tamil Inchipur, and rice in loads of European languages comes from the Tamil Arisi. Hmm. Without the Tamil, Ireland's that. greatest contribution to world cuisine, the spice bag, would not exist. And honestly, I don't want to live in that kind of world. <laughs> One Roman cookbook had over 300 recipes using Indian spices from ostrich curry to tasty peppered brain sausage, or everyone's favorite, another laxative. <laughs> is in the description, in case you need a laxative. Tamils got so rich off of their trade routes that just one temple, the Patmanapaswami Temple, whose vaults were recently opened, has a treasure worth over $700 billion. This was accumulated over thousands of years from the donations from Tamil dynasties like the Saras, the Panjas, the Pallavas, and the Sola. Some of the things in the temple include this golden Mahavishnu statue, tens of thousands of gold coins, a solid gold throne, golden elephants, a five meter long diamond necklace, and my personal favorite, a 30 kilogram solid gold coconut. At what point does that stop being a coconut and start being a golden ball? <laughs> there are still unopened vaults in this temple, so we're still unsure of- Get Geraldo on that. Tamil merchants the to open those and craft people worked across Southeast Asia and lived in small communities there. Tamil merchants didn't just trade pepper with Southeast Asia. They traded the spiciest thing of all, ideas. From the 4th century CE on, kingdoms from Thailand to Vietnam to Indonesia were ruled by Hindu kings and wrote using Tamil writing. Modern Khmer, Javanese and Thai scripts all descend from the Tamil Pallava script. The greatest monument to this cultural exchange is the originally 
Hindu temple of Angkor Wat in Cambodia, the largest religious structure on earth. Hmm. By the end of the 13th century, we even find a Tamil Hindu temple dedicated to Shiva all the way over in the Chinese part of Qingzhou, where a small Tamil community lived. The wealth and fame of the Tamil lands invited more than just merchants. A small Jewish community could be found in Kochi in the 6th century BCE. More even came as refugees after the destruction of the Second Temple mm. in 70 CE. And according to local tradition, the Jews were followed by St. Thomas, the Apostle of Jesus, who landed in India in yes. 52 CE and started converting people to Christianity. From Thomas, India's current Syrian Christian community claims descent. In 629 CE, a mosque was built by Muslim merchants in Muziris, and you can still go visit it today, or a part of it at least, because the Portuguese blew it up in 1504, but like, it's still cool, you can still see some of it. Okay, so we're going to do a little time jump here. Let's see, invaded by Buddhist warrior tribes, Jainism and Buddhism take over for a bit, rise of the Pallava dynasty, Hindu revival, ah, here it is. After the Sangha period, the next great Tamil golden age happened under the Sola dynasty, between the 9th and 13th centuries. Their greatest king, Raja Raja Sola, rose to the throne in 985. I can't, I mean, I can't believe that's how it's pronounced. Raja Raja Sola. His kingdom into an empire that conquered most of South India, Sri Lanka, and the Maldives. The Sola used their massive navy, the largest in Asia at the time, to control the trade routes between Southeast Asia and China. Hmm. When the Sri Vijaya Empire threatened to block Sola access to the Straits of Malacca, the Solas launched <laughs> massive naval attacks across Indonesia been attacked and Malaysia, by a naval. and even kidnapped it's the Sri Vijaya big and, and no one ever messed with their trade routes ever again. Along with an army containing 60,000 war elephants, the Sola King's wow. personal guard included a lot of or women bodyguards trained in Tamil martial arts and weapons. There are also mentions of women working Looks as like a video we can and react to. and using their own money I'm interested to make large in that. donations. That's an people. auntie you don't want to mess with. Raja Raja Sola poured his enormous wealth into building Dang. massive temples in a style called Dravidian architecture. The most well known of these being the Raja Raja Jaiswara temple in Tanjore. This 66 meter tall soaring monument. <laughs> These temples received massive donations from the royal, and then they offered loans from those donations to farmers, villages, and merchants. Solar temples became this weird vehicle for redistributing wealth and reinvesting it in arts and local communities, making everyone richer. It's no wonder why when Marco Polo came here in 1273, he called the Solar Lands the richest province on earth. Solar power declined in the 12th and 13th century. Buddhism and Islam replaced Hinduism in Southeast Asia, and Tamil lands in Kerala drifted away and developed their own language and culture, which resulted in the modern Malayalam language. Okay, so we're going to need to do another time jump. You have Muslim invasions from the north, rise of the Vijayanagarap, who built the world's second largest city, arrival of the Portuguese, destruction of the Vijayanagarap by Muslim armies, Tamil lands fracture into small states, and ah, here it is. No, 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 it can't be. Not you. Not you again. Happy <laughs> Harold, it is a smashing civilization you've got there. It would be a shame if someone were to plunder it. <laughs> Tamilicum was split into small competing states in the yep, 17th yep. century, which made it But we don't hurt their feelings in a movie. Yeah, yeah no, we won't say anything bad about them. Why would we? By the end of the 18th century, most of South India was under British rule. The Tamils resisted the British invasion. One example is that of the Queen of Shivaganga, Velu Nachia. To protect her kingdom from invasion, she built an army to resist the British imperialists. This army included a regiment of women soldiers. Heck yeah. One of them, Kulili, volunteers to destroy a vital British ammunition depot that was located we'll in the cannons. Kalili and her fellow warriors <laughs> easily entered the temple as worshippers because the British taught women were harmless. Unable to sneak <laughs> weapons in, they poured oil over Kalili, who then set herself on fire wow, and dang. leapt into the ammunition depot, blowing it up and securing victory for her queen in the following battles, becoming the first woman martyr in India's long battle for freedom. She's Despite awesome. acts like this, by 1858, the British crown had seized control of all of India. 
Famine quickly swept South India between 1876 and 1878, killing 8 million people. With the area devastated by famine, the British could dismantle the over 2,000 euro exactly, Tamil that's what you should textile do. industry. Rather than help As the hungry, just take their stuff. British textile couldn't compete with Tamil textile, so they destroyed all the Indian loom. Sure. Then they pushed Tamils out of work as craftspeople and onto Makes tea, sense. sugar, coffee, and opium plantations in India, or sent them off across their empire as indentured servants. John Sullivan, a colonial official in southern India, said, under their own dynasties, all the revenue that was collected in the country was spent in the country. Our system acts very much like a sponge, drawing up all the good things from the banks of the Ganges yep. and squeezing them out on the banks of the Thames. <coughs> that's that's the philosophy of Britain imperialism. Britain yep. in, 1947. in the first two decades of Indian independence, language became a battlefield in India. In 1950, Hindi, the most spoken language in India, was selected as the sole official language of the country, with 1965 picked as the year the changeover from English would happen. Speakers of the Dravidian languages in the south didn't like Hindi because it was Sanskrit. Yeah, there's no official language which anymore. They considered more alien right? than That's English. What I thought. As 1965 approached, thousands of Tamil student protesters shouted, Hindi never, English ever, in the streets of Seni. Four students set themselves on fire Sunny. as a symbol of non-violent protest. Don't, don't say Dravidian yourself on political fire. parties made it clear that if Hindi became the official language of India, then Tamil Nadu would secede from India. Oh, dang. The protesters won. The Official Languages Act Amendment of 1967 ensured the continued use of English alongside Hindi as the official language of India up until today. Even now in India, Tamil Nadu is famous for its independent streak, love of its culture and language, and for acting as the champion of Dravidian politics against the North. But Tamils don't only live in Tamil Nadu. Just a few kilometers away from there is the island nation known today as Sri Lanka, where Tamils make up 15% of the population. Sri Lanka is home to several ethnic groups. The mostly Buddhist Sinhalese are the majority, and the mostly Hindu Tamils are the second largest group. Both groups have been on the island for over 2,000 years. This island was known as Ceylon when it suffered three centuries of colonialism under Portugal, the Netherlands, and then their British Empire took over in 1796. When the British arrived, they were like, how can I make everything worse? Oh, yep. let's introduce inter-ethnic conflict. <laughs> in the 19th and early 20th centuries, to spur hatred, the British chose Tamils for higher positions than the Sinhalese in the government. <laughs> Then, in the Sri Lankan highlands, Sinhalese lands were seized by the British and enslaved Tamils from India were settled there as plantation workers. These are Indian Tamils, distinct from the Sri Lankan Tamils who have lived in Sri Lanka for much, much longer. Sri Lankan Tamils live in the north and east, Indian Tamils live in the central highlands, and the Sinhalese live essentially everywhere else. When the British got kicked out of Ceylon, now Sri Lanka, in 1948, the majority of Sinhalese took control of the island. Sinhalese nationalism exploded, and soon anti tamil massacres swept the island in 1956, 1958, and 1977, which led to the formation of a guerrilla fighting group known as the Liberation Tigers of Tamil Elam, better known as the Tamil Tigers. On the 31st of May 1981, the Sri Lankan police burned the Jaffna Public Library to the ground, home to 97,000 books and containing irreplaceable artifacts of Tamil history. Dang. Seeing the fire, one Tamil refugee the said, it was as if my entire biography, my history and the history of the Tamils had been destroyed, wiped from the face of the earth as if we did not exist. On July 23rd, 1983, the Tamil Tigers ambushed and killed 15 Sri Lankan soldiers, causing another anti-Tamil massacre to sweep the country in an event known as Black July. The Sri Lankan civil war had begun. The Tamil Tigers were fighting for an independent Tamil nation in the Tamil parts of the island. As the war dragged on over decades, the Tamils became infamous for inventing the explosive suicide vest and for carrying out a suicide bombing campaign across Sri Lanka. The Sri Lankan army retaliated with brutal attacks against the Tamil Tigers, which mostly resulted in the deaths and displacement of tens of thousands of innocent Tamil civilians. The Sri Lankan state is still undergoing investigations for committing a genocide against the Tamils. This bloody war dragged on for 26 years, 
until the 18th of May 2009, when the leader of the Tamil Tigers, V. Pirapakaran, was killed and the Tigers surrendered. The war took the lives of over 100,000 people, with 40,000 Tamil civilians being killed in the final few months of the war. These are rough estimates because a proper investigation hasn't been done. The war caused a mass exodus of Sri Lankan Tamil refugees to India, Australia, Europe and North America. Today around 8 million Tamils live outside of India and Sri Lanka. From the 19th century onwards they went as indentured labourers across the British Empire, especially to Malaysia, Singapore, South Africa, Fiji, Mauritius and the Caribbean, where many have kept their Tamil identity. Tamil is actually an official language in Singapore and Malaysia. Well, I think now it's time to take a look at Tamil culture. Religion. Today about 88% of the Tamil population of Tamil Nadu are Hindu, 6% are Christians, 5.8% are Muslims, and Jains, Buddhists and Sikhs make up the rest. The most important Tamil festival is Thai Pongal, a harvest festival <coughs> dedicated to the Hindu sun god Surya that usually occurs on the 14th of January. This festival is celebrated by all Tamils regardless of religion though. Pongal means to boil or overflow and refers to the traditional dish of new harvest rice boiled in milk with raw sugar. Pongal celebrations include decorating cows, ritual bathing, parades, prayers, dances, creating art, and getting together with friends and family and exchanging gifts. During Pongal in Tamil Nadu, you might also see a Jalikatu in this over 2,000 year old sport. An Indian bull is released into a crowd of people and then attempt to grab the hump on the bull's back with both arms and hang on to it for as long as possible attempting to bring the bull to a full stop, thus taming the bull. If they do so, they get a prize. If no one tames the bull, the owner of the bull gets a prize. There have been many attempts to ban this sport in recent years, which has caused massive popular backlash. Another interesting Tamil holiday is a May festival, the god Aravan, who is worshipped by transgender people called Tevrunar in Tamil. At this annual festival at Kovakam, you'll see ceremonial marriages between festival goers and the god Aravan, along with beauty pageants from I've not heard about that, not heard about that one. The Tamil Nadu government. In 2008, Tamil Nadu became the first state in India to allow people to legally identify as the third gender. Arts. Hmm. Huh. Tanjibur paintings and solar bronzes are some of the Tamil's greatest contributions to world art. But one of the more humble yet distinct features of Tamil art is the kolam which decorates the front of almost every Tamil home. These are geometrical and floral designs made of rice flour. Each day the kolam is crafted by women and then erased the next morning to make room for a new one. Today in Tamil Nadu, huts to five-star hotels will all have kolam. One of the most every treasured day? pieces wow. of Tamil literature is the Tirukuru by Tiru Boulevard, which had its origins in the Sangam period but was finalized a few centuries after. This is a masterpiece in ethics and living well. The Tirukuru is made up of three books of wise sayings on virtue, wealth and love, all delivered in quick two-line poems. For example, the greatest virtue of all is non-killing, truthfulness cometh only next. It also just stops midway and talks about how to build good forts and I'm always down for some fort talk. Charity and kindness are also key aspects and it emphasises non-violence and vegetarianism. Avoidance of killing and eating the meat of even one animal is more meritorious than a thousand sacrifices. The Tirukural is vital to Tamil culture. It pops up in songs, films and books. Every bus in Tamil Nadu is legally obligated to have a verse from the Tirukural on it. <laughs> one of the Tamil's most famous dances is Paratanateo. Yep. This dance tells a story through complicated mudras or hand gestures, facial expressions and body posture. It also just looks incredible. Food. Rice is the staple of the mostly vegetarian Tamil diet. Bananas and plantains, jackfruit, coconut, lentils, tamarind and mango are also commonly used ingredients, along with a huge amount of spices. Traditionally, a Tamil meal is eaten off of a banana leaf. Some favourite Tamil foods include the light and fluffy idli, idli. the fried and spicy vadai, the yep. crispy dosa and yep. the delicious fried banana banda. And I've no not made that, I've made the other thing. Outside of sambar, chutney, or in Sri Lanka, coconut sambal. Tamils also love their coffee. Yes! So yes. yes. Filter coffee. Products. Cinema. Tamil people yeah. are yeah. Superstar! Based in the Kodobakum neighborhood in Sinha, the Tamil film industry, or Kollywood, is the second largest <laughs> film industry in India. 
Manny Ratnam's gangster epic Nyakam yep. was included in Time Magazine's 100 Best Movies of All Time. Mm. I actually watched a movie with one of Tamil cinema's superstars, Rajini Kant, where this happens, and it was an absolutely <laughs> amazing movie. <thing. laughs> Tamil cinema has even bled into Tamil politics. Three chief mm. ministers of the Tamil Nadu state have risen out of Tamil cinema. Oh, wow. Tamil cinema asks the Tamils to preserve yeah. <laughs> their independent and original culture by producing films in the Tamil language based on Tamil ideas and culture. I wish there was something like that for YouTubers, so they could create independent and high quality educational content for people that just nice, love them. Uh, oh wait, Kavito nice. and a bunch of our career friends got That's together and made our own platform called Nebula, and we're excited to be partnering with CuriosityStream. Nebula is a place where you a, can watch some of yeah, the best educational content. That was really yeah. informative. Yeah, they always are. This, yep. this channel, which is Con, Congito? Yeah, Cognito. Cognito, Cognito. Yeah, everything we've ever read, I think we've done like three or four of their videos. They're always, one, it must take so long to animate and put all that together. Not obviously on top of the research. The research too. That they yeah. have to do. But they keep you engaged, mm -hmm. which is, is you know, for, I, my two favorite subjects were history and English, so it's not hard for me to stay engaged with a history lesson. But for other people, it you you can lose people. Oh, 100%. Fast. 100%. And they do a great, great job, especially yeah. the measuring things in Danny DeVito's. That yes. was pretty funny. That was fantastic. And uh, it <laughs> makes a lot of humor in there as well. Um, a lot of stuff we did know, so it's, it's great. Obviously, uh, after three years, hopefully we would have learned some stuff. Yeah. And I feel like... We know a lot more in terms of informational videos. Yes. Like we're like we're yeah, not constantly going. Oh, I didn't oh, know. Oh, that. oh, right. We know a lot more. I would hope so. Yeah. Uh, after two years, and yeah, the, I think wasn't it? Um, I forget his name, but the the guy who's I think in Indian polit no British politics that did the does British owe the reparations. Remember that video? That, oh yeah. That guy. Yeah. He he. I think in that video, or it was a different video, he says that. British took one of the richest nations in the world mm -hmm. at the time mm -hmm. and made it one of the poorest. Correct. Uh, Just drained it. In a, yeah. And then made sure when they left, it was screwed yep. so that it could never be what it was before they took it. Yep. Yeah. But what they did, it, it'll take centuries probably to yeah. get back to where, not that Yeah, it was aren't. basically, we're not going to own you anymore. Okay, then we're going to make it impossible for you to be ever remotely close to us. And to their credit, India basically said, doesn't matter. Yeah. We're still going to do what we can do, even though you've irreparably scarred us. The, the thing in this video that really drove something home for me that I think I have a better understanding of is why, and I understand it, there's pros and cons to it. I understand the pride in your language mm -hmm. and you should be proud of that. I mean, that's something that I think if, if, if I knew my language was like possibly the oldest known language on earth, mm -hmm. I wouldn't want it perverted. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't want another language made the national language of my country when my language is like the oldest and most celebrated. And so I understand that. But on the other hand, I don't like the divisiveness it causes because I can see where um, it's really difficult to get people in certain regions to like other regions. I imagine it's really difficult for Tamil people to want to watch a Hindi film Solely because it's not in yeah. the the Tamil language. We know, obviously, there's a bunch of people in the Super Family that are fantastic, and they they just like good cinema, just exactly. like we do. Just like we and do. obviously for us, it's it's even though people think we have biases, we read subtitles for every single one. Of them. Yeah, so, I mean, obviously we do have biases that are based on our own opinions and our understandings of the art form and what we feel we like, but, but not, not on a language, not on a language basis or a culture basis or a nationality basis. Yeah, it, make, it would make no sense. No for sense us to us. I literally have to, to, regardless of it's Hindi, Malayalam, Bengal, whatever, I have to read subtitles. Right. And, so and it makes no sense why would I have a, I just, I just want good cinema. Exactly. Want good cinema from every Just want good language. cinema, and I. There'll never be any particular way to pinpoint the first language, and to me, it's kind of a moot point because there are so many languages on the planet. Why are we going to say one's more preferred than another, and just accept the fact that we have a beautiful place with as many languages as there are stars in the sky, mm -hmm. and just get to know each of them? Like I, you know what I'd love to see? I don't know that one exists. What's that language in Africa? The Dosa people, I think, or the that everything their uh, language has the sound in it, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. I'd love to watch a 
film in their language. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah. yeah I would love it. So, um, Also, I did love in this video about the, um, learning about that all the women warriors. That's awesome. It happened multiple times in this video. Um, so if there's more videos about that, and uh, that that one where the ant, like, he's like, that's a dangerous auntie. That looked like a video we can react to. So if that's yeah. something that we should react to, let me know, because that seems interesting and, to me. And I'm again thinking about one of the first trailers we saw after Gully Boy was... Manicarnica. Yeah. With Meryl Streep. Yeah, we still have... That's him, not me. <laughs> Y'all, every... I've gotten so much hatred because of him doing that. Saying, you guys keep making fun of her. You find the last time that was me. That's him. Well, if she wouldn't say stupid things, that would But she said it once! <laughs> Doesn't matter. I don't care who you are. <laughs> I don't care. Never gonna let it go. I don't care who wow. you are. If you make a dumb statement like but that. But back to what I was saying. You're gonna be really I cool wanted to life. see, I, I really wanted to see that movie. Did we, did we hear anything about it? Did people say it was good or it's not, uh, it's not good? There was mixed reviews. Though. Mixed reviews? Okay. Um, I figured if we got enough positives, we would have seen it by You ever now. heard of the saying, they'll never let me live that down? It's sort of things like that. I don't care if you're the only person who can say like they're the the, the greatest. It's Tom Brady, Ma, like Marlon Brando. Is oh, actor Daniel Day Lewis, <laughs> and he never would. Yeah, but he's better than ten. I mean, I mean, he's better than Marlon Brando was. So it's like, no. But even like even I just gave the example of Tom Brady, who is without question the greatest quarterback that's ever played the game. I've never heard him say I'm the greatest quarterback that's ever played the game, or I am better than Joe Montana, or you know you those words. Think so. He may, but he's never said it. Yeah. However, if he did, I don't know that I would. It's him. First of all, she's not, she's not even Tamil, and she was playing a Tamil character in her last film. So that must piss off some of them. But again, I, anyway. thought, I thought it was weird. Anyways, yeah. isn't that what was the character that yeah. Sarah played? Who? Isn't her name Sarah from from Family Man in the second season? And everybody was upset because. Oh yeah 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 no. Samantha. Yeah, uh, Samantha. She is... Samantha, sorry. She's stomach. Right, but they darkened her oh, skin. Oh, no, she's Telugu. Yeah, they did darken her skin. That, yeah. that upset people. Yeah. That Under understandably. Yeah, that, that upset people. But, but wasn't she? She was playing a Tamilian. either T Tamil or Telugu. She's one of the South uh, states. Yeah. Anyways. Um, anyways, that was fantastic. Very informational video. Let us know other informational videos we can react to down below. Just